welcome. Welcome, GNS Photography. <laughs> Would you come to the front and get in trouble with that's me? That's right, that's right. Uh, first of all, good afternoon. Uh, some of you heard what we had, were talking about earlier, but in case uh, anyone hasn't noticed, uh, Michael Andrew is not presenting. Uh, this time it's Judith Andrew. But did I hear it all? No, it was just kidding. I was actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. My people, my people. So I went to London. I don't know if you, most of you heard this, but uh, the first time we went to London, uh, the CEO of our company, Michael Andrew, Andrew said, I don't need to go to London. You can go, you know, you go. I didn't want to go. He didn't want to. So then um, I show up to the London Book Fair and I'm like, hi, I'm Judith Anderley. And the first question was, is Michael here? <laughs> Every time. So yeah, so it's okay. I don't mind. Uh, we know that he's known, but I'm also known. So just really quick, a little bit about myself. Uh, I am Judith Anderley and I have an MBA in marketing and a JD at law. So sometimes I get a little wordy and sometimes I get a little specific from the legal side. And so the first thing I want to start off with is, does anybody know what the title of this talk is today? Business contracts in the self-publishing world and relationship management. Who said that? I did. Yay! Do you I get a tie? Yes, you get a keychain from China. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they make them somewhere else? Yes. No, this is this is a keychain purchased in China. Oh. And it was manufactured in China. So yeah, that's from our China trip. Yes, it's not China. China. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But the reason why I gave it away was because, in essence, there's a big title, but the bottom line is this workshop. So it's not a presentation. It's not me up here pontificating about how great I am, although I am. <laughs> it's, it's actually about us talking, you know, just kind of working out some of the things that we need to in order to network. Right? The bottom line is all of us are here because we want to learn and we want to get to know other people. But how many of you in here enjoy meeting new people, like actively going up to somebody new that you don't know? Oh, good, okay, half of the room, great, so you guys can help me, you know, because that's what we're here to talk about. I think one of the main things to start off with is the fact that with all of the schooling and training that I've done, uh, frankly, the bottom line is everything that I know about networking comes through just doing it. You know, you have to actively Go in there and try to network. So although I've seen a lot of business books to talk about networking and the best ways to do it, and coming up and saying, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, the bottom line is you actually have to come out of your comfort zone, which is why I did the teaching because I wanted to see who was going to speak up first. But can anybody, you know, give us, especially those of you who enjoy networking, uh, can you tell me, like, what's one important thing to do when you're networking in any industry, in particular in the publishing industry? Listen. Listen, good, good. Yes, Mr. Malk? Meet the right people and listen. Meet the right people, good. Yeah. That's So listen and meet the right people. So how do you do that, right? How do you meet the right people and how do you listen, who do you listen to? Yes. You say hello. You say hello, good. You put yourself in the places where they tend to be. Were you in my last talk with the with them? No. Oh, okay, good, I'm glad. <laughs> you put yourself, perfect. So this is really important. You want to listen, you want to meet the right people, right? You want to meet, you know, after we say hello, come up to say hello, and you want to put yourself in the place of the other person. And that's really key, and it goes down to my first point, which is the WIPO. That's my acronym that I think I read somewhere else, so it's not mine, but I can't remember who originated it. But it's basically, what's in it for me? And that's just what's in it for me, but what's in it for the person that you're speaking to? Uh, Michael Andrew is walking down the hall, and then you stop him and you say, hi, Michael. If he stops, which he usually does, right? What's it for him to stop? Why does he stop? And the reason, and I know Michael, I happen to know him, but the reason why is because he cares about you. So he wants to know why you're stopping. So immediately you want to go into what's in it for him and then you say, hi, I'm so-and-so, I write, I'm in your genre, or maybe I've read your books and I really like them and all kinds of accolades that I've heard. But the bottom line is, he's not necessarily there to hear about how great he is. He wants to know about you and why you're stopping him. So it's always what's in it for the person that you're contacting. And the way to contact and the way to say hello doesn't necessarily need to be in person, in particular last year, right? Last year, how many of us were able to meet anybody in person? No one, right? Yes? No, I was. I work nonprofit. I'm stuck in that field, so. But, but with COVID, you were able to meet people? Actively, well, oh, good. Well, then it's one of the few industries because most of them were shut down, right? We couldn't even talk to them. Yes. I was a COVID nurse. I did travel. 
I'm sorry, couldn't you do what? I was a public nurse, I did travel, and I ended up setting up a basically like logistics distribution for donations to nurses. Yes. So first of all, from the bottom of I think everybody's heart, thank you for, for your work. And we know that, uh, you know, first responders and everybody that dealt with the public, in particular those that got COVID, you guys were really tested to the limit, so I appreciate the fact that you must have gone on your way with extra hours, putting your own family at risk for those of others. So, so thank you. And I think for those of you who were lucky enough to meet with other people, those of us who were stuck back in the Zoom, right, where we couldn't go out, you know, although we love our family, we were stuck with them the whole time, <laughs> we couldn't talk to other people, the only way that we could communicate was through Zoom. So we weren't able to stop somebody and say hello. So the only way to do it was to Zoom, but how do you, who do you Zoom, who do you contact, right? Anybody, any ideas as to, you know, what, where do you start with contacts? How do you reach out? Yes. I think for me it was uh, figuring out what my actual goal was and what holes I needed to fill in my own knowledge base, right? Perfect. And so that would help me start to begin to search and find those resources and connect with the right people. Perfect, so then what is, what, what is your goal? What is your purpose for reaching out? And that's actually a good point to start. So for example, in the publishing industry, right? Um, a, you know, what is your goal? Whether you're an author who wants to reach out to a publishing company, you're a narrator who wants to offer your services, or maybe you're a publisher who's looking for authors, right? Because the publishers are out there. Or you're an agent who's looking for books to, you know, that you want to contract. So th that's your first purpose. Why are you doing it? And so then you look for the resource. One of the best resources to develop uh, your list, and that's actually the, the, the first point where you want to begin is you want to look at your purpose and then you want to start building your list, right? You want to start getting these names. Um, so one of the great uh, areas to go to is uh, trade shows. And I brought this to show you. This is from the Beijing Book Fair. And this was in um, two years ago that we got it, 2019. And you see it's dog-eared. Because at the book fairs, they actually do give away still physical books. Now, if you can't travel to the book fairs, you can go to their digital website. And you can actually look for who is exhibiting or who's doing the contact there, whether it's an agent, whether it's a publishing company, or the publishers actually go in there and look for the authors that are attending, you know, or narrators, depending on the company. So the first thing is develop your email list, develop your contact list, and then look for the resources depend, depending on what your purpose is, right? Afterwards, you do the hello. You reach out via email. You, you, if you're in person, you can go up to them, but if you're not, you reach out via email and then you, know, you start explaining why you're reaching out to them. And again, always remember the WIFO. So if you're gonna send an email and you're writing someone, you gotta remember what's in it for them. Why should they stop and read what you're sending them? And the best way to do that is to just get to the point. Because if you start you know, going on, don't forget, people read thousands of emails. So for example, if I get an email that says, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm a narrator, uh, you know, I haven't been, uh, I just got an email earlier today. It says, hi, I'm so-and-so, I used to be in the movie industry, but because of COVID, my work dried up, so now I'm actually actively doing narrations. And if you have you know, any projects that uh, you have coming up, I would love to speak to you about them. That was it. I'm like, oh, okay, I forwarded it on to Steve Campbell, who handles our audio production, and I said, thank you, you know, good luck, and I'll, you know, put you in touch with the right person. And that didn't take too long, and hopefully, you know, we can get some place with this individual. But ultimately, they were able to quickly tell me what was in it for me, which is, you know, a resource of somebody new, and what they wanted out of it. So building your list, your contact list, is really important in the publishing industry. As a second step, once you send an email and hopefully they respond to you. What do you think is next? Anybody? Do you like say great thank you and then move on and then that's it? Follow up. Follow up. Key. And is it a follow up because they actually responded or is it a follow up because they said, you know, hey, uh, reach out to me? Or is it a follow up because they said no? When do you follow up? It depends. Good point. Here's my answer. Always follow up. Because if somebody tells me no, I don't hear no, leave me alone. I hear, oh, no, not right now. Right now I don't need the service, but maybe later on I do. And so what you do, you don't want to pester them. You don't want to stop people, right? I had somebody, actually, 
I'll give you an example of not the way not to do it. <laughs> Somebody wrote an email and they said, hi, Judith. Fortunately, they have my name. Sometimes they go, hi, you know, person. They don't even have a name, right? But hi, Judith. Um, we are looking, we're in the Vegas, uh, and we're looking for the, you know, we published the top 20 employers, so we'd be interested in talking to you about them. You know, are you kidding? We're so busy. I'm done. Didn't even respond. I got a follow-up email. Good for them, right? Mm -hmm. Hi, Judith. I don't know if you saw my previous email. You know, I'm reaching out to you about the top 20 employers, blah, blah, blah. You know, you should get in on this, blah, blah, blah. I didn't follow up. The third email really pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> because here's what the third email said to me. Hi, Judith. You haven't responded to my emails. So can you give me the name of the person to whom I should be addressing my emails? Because... I want to talk to them about the top 20 employers in Vegas. So I responded to that. <laughs> I said, uh, hello, so-and-so. Uh, there's no one else that you can contact because I'm the right person to contact. I said, but frankly, your approach is off-putting. I said, you know, because I'm not interested in what you're selling, and therefore I hadn't responded. Uh, so we wish you well. You know, you hope you succeed, but we're not interested in partaking. As a responder again. Uh, but you know, the way I see it is, just because you're selling something and I don't get back to you, they'll come back and say, well, you're not the right person, tell me who I should speak to. Wrong attitude to take. Um, I used to work for Bao Shalom and I remember the head of H, uh, she was the head of HR, or customer service. Um, he was, the person was being transferred, I think he was applying for a job, he was going to apply for a job, and you know, it happens sometimes in companies, uh, especially previously when digital was in around. He calls in and he was being transferred. And so he finally gets transferred to the person who was going to hire him. And he was such a jerk. He says to her the same attitude, look, I've been transferred a lot of times. I need to speak to so-and-so. So can you make sure you transfer me to the right person this time? So she said, I am the right person. He says, oh, immediately really nice. Oh, oh, you know, I want to, because of the interview. And she says, don't bother. They cancel the interview. Because again, you know, what's in it for the other person? If they're not getting back to you right away, give people some time. And then when you follow up again, just be polite about it. Hey, you know, I wrote to you a couple months ago or whenever, just making sure you're probably busy. You know, if you can't get back to me right now, I'll understand, but this is what I do. Because believe it or not, people are reading the messages. It's just sometimes at that moment they either can't get back to you or it's something that they don't need. So developing your email list is really important. Approaching saying hello is really important. Thinking about what's in it for the individual that you're speaking to is important, right? Remembering your goal. And then always follow up, even if it's a no. Because a no could be a no right now. But make sure that when you follow up, you do it the right way, right? Don't take it personally, because nobody knows who you are. Virtually, who knows? So it's not like they're being a jerk to you. It's just that maybe they're just really busy. But please don't be a jerk to them. Because <laughs> I can assure you, then it'll be a cutoff point. So, okay, so we talk, we've talked about developing your publishing list. We've talked about what's in it for them. Uh, can you tell me another uh, thing to consider when you're thinking about developing your contact list and how you're going to reach out to them? Anything else that you think would be important? Yes? I actually have a question. Please? Uh, oh, wait. Yeah. Question? It's a big keychain <laughs> from Hong Kong. There you go. Is there, um, I have a son who has special needs, and in raising him, I learned that there's a lot of people going to tell me, no, they can't help me. But I never hang up a phone call without saying, can you give me a direction? Can you refer me to someone else? Whatever. Is there ever a time to not ask for that where it would be like annoying to someone who's busy or whatever? Is there ever a time that that's inappropriate because that's like one of my things that I always do? That you always say if you're not the right person? Yeah. I think it's in, the, it's in the approach. I always ask like, because like if they don't have a program that's helpful, can you recommend some place that might? is what I would say. You know. Okay, so if I understand the question correctly, so let me get through the process. So you're reaching out, right, and you're looking for the wisdom for the other person. What's in it for them to help you? Is it because you're reaching out on profit? Is it, you always think of the ethos of the organization, right? Okay. So whatever is in it for them, that's what you want to approach them with. 
So for example, if it's a nonprofit that um, specializes in a particular segment of special needs, you say, hello, I'm so-and-so, I understand that you do this and that. And in line with that, this is what I need. And then if they say, no, we can't help you, and then you say, polite, you say, well, okay, is there a, a better time for me to call? Or is there a different department, you know? Is there any way that I can, you know? So in other words, you're putting yourself as a helpful resource. Because people want to help you. Let's, you know, let's give everybody credit. Everybody wants to help, right? Maybe they're busy. But the moment you put it and you phrase it as what's in it for them, you know, you remind them of their purpose, immediately you're telling me, like, for example, on BPN, we publish books, right? If somebody approaches me and says, I understand that you're a publisher and that you publish in sci-fi. And I'm, so immediately you're speaking to me and to what I do. And I'm an author and I've published several books or I'm an author, I'm starting out and I need guidance or I need a mentorship or I'd like you to publish me. And now you're telling me what, what's in it for you based on what's in it for me. And so that's a, a good way. Does, does that help? Okay, but it's, it's okay to ask. If you're not the right person, just the way the approach that you do it is the way to do it, yeah. yes. Yes. Force of habit, bit of a segue, I'm sorry. 211 is the United Way helpline if someone needs help with individual resources ranging from rent to special needs. 211? 211. It's I, I the United it. Way helpline if you know someone in need of resources, <coughs> can be any resource, they can look it up or call it. If you look it up, you enter in your zip code. If you call, you go through to, uh, to an operator, tell them your zip code and what you need and they can tell you what resources are available in that area. It's a nationwide hotline. Oh, thank you for that. I, I wasn't even aware. Did anybody know that? You did. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's an interesting aspect because I do find in, in authorship and everything else that a lot of times people are authors or they're in the publishing industry because they have individuals in their family that need help and being in this industry allows them to be close to their people. But so, and thank you, and, and of course you better keep James. <laughs> but but because it was sort of off topic, you get a Vegas key change. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Thank but you it's for, also from China. It, 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 well, yes, thank you, Michael Andrew. <laughs> do know? We don't know. He says it's also from China. I don't know. Uh, but no, but but thank you for that information. And it is true in the publishing industry. And I think to Mike's point, all of us that are in the industry. For whatever reason, maybe because we're creative by nature or whatever, we usually tend to have people, and we do in our family, right, who you know are, are considered special needs on the spectrum or whatever. Uh, it's, it's always good to know that there's a resource. Um, so I didn't know about. I'm going to follow up more on the two one one because I don't know, you know, what other help they can give. But for example, in that particular case, that could be part of your publishing industry contact, right? But when you're contacting them, make sure that you remind them of their purpose first. Because again, they, I'm sure they get a lot of calls and you know, people are always asking them for different things. So, so back to the public. Yes. I was just gonna. Um, no, please. Yes, I wanna answer your earlier question, but also kind of related to just, I think the biggest contact you might find is someone within your network might have a contact that you can utilize. And I think you have a better chance of getting in touch that way as well. Good point, and that's actually... Can you just repeat that yes. so they can hear the recording? And good point. It, it's reaching out to your network. And when we're talking about developing your list, right, your contact list, reaching out to your network, if someone within your network might have or might know somebody for the particular purpose you're reaching out to. Thank you. And in this case, publishing, right? I mean, it, it applies it to everything else, but in particular, publishing. So who in your network knows maybe somebody that publishes, maybe someone that translates, you know, and by the way, I just wanted to let you know that here in the front seat, we're honored to have Enrique Padilla. Am I pronouncing it? Yes. And so Enrique is from Spain, and he uh, runs one of the largest publishing companies in, in Spanish in Spain. The largest. The largest. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so you never know, right? You never know who's sitting up front. Uh, oh. My name is Michael <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in translations. I'm interested in translations. I should have you do role play. <laughs> but you never know. You never know who's sitting next to you, right? And I think that's a good point. You know, work your network and hear what you're at 20 books to 50K. Where is your network? Next to you. Next to you. Thank you. There's your network. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for playing. Exactly. You know, you just never know who you're sitting next to. And the first thing you do is you say hello, right? And, and what's the first thing after you say hello to the person next to you? My name is. 
Yeah. You ask. What do you write? No. Ah, what do you write? exactly. What do you write? Because you want to talk to them about what's in it for them, right? It's a good point. It's what's in it for them. So, hello, how are you? What, you know, first of all, do you have a few minutes? Because sometimes people are busy. I always ask that. Whenever I place a call or something, I, even if it's my mom, I always say, do you have a few minutes? Because who knows, she might be watching her favorite soap opera or whatever she's doing, you know. So, um, so it's always good to say, do you have a few minutes? And people immediately open up at that moment because you're being polite enough to ask them about their time. Uh, but asking them what they're right is important. Um, and so it, work your network. This is your network here. Um, and so you develop that list. Let me make sure I'm covering all the points. Um, you develop your list. You start communicating with the individuals. When do you start communicating? Do you, um, so you know Michael Andrews here. You're a sci-fi author. And he's opened himself up and he says, you know, come up to me and talk to me. So when should you reach out to him? Yes. When you have something valuable for them? Yes, well, you have something valuable and you have something valuable here, right? Uh, but should you do it now or should you wait till he gets back when he's less busy? Now, when he's giving you the opportunity. Now. You do it now. Because I heard this is, I heard this from somebody yesterday or two days ago. I have uh, four books. Yeah. If it's you, please don't take it personally because I'm not using your name. But, um, I have four books. I've written four books. I've written them in English, and I'm interested in translating them into Spanish because I speak Spanish. I'm like, great, awesome. And what about audio? Oh, yeah, audio is really, by the way, I said, you know, Podium is here. And Podium is, is uh, producing audios in Spanish. And Tantor is here, and they're producing audios in Spanish. So you should go speak to them. And guess what the person said? Ask you more questions. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> I don't want to bother them. I don't want to bother them. I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. So and I said, yes, but they're here now. <laughs> that right. Because, that contact. you know, plus, you have four books already. Well, I haven't published them. That's okay. Go up, talk to them, introduce yourself, because that way they will see you, they'll know you, and then you can say, listen, right now I'm in the middle of writing them. I'll get back to you. Get a name to make sure that you make that contact, and they still didn't. So if that individual goes home and whatever, and when they're ready, they reach out to Tantor and they write an email, what's the likelihood that they're gonna get a response? Very low. Very low. So the time is now. You need to make sure that you take advantage of your network, of your time. This is not a plug for 20 books to 50K by all means, but you're here at 20 books to 50K. So take advantage of it. You know, build your network, build your list, by reaching out to different people, go within your network and make sure that you follow up. So the timing is now. Um, another thing is, when somebody responds to you and they say, they give you the answer that you need, what do you do after that? Thank you. Thank you. Well, yes, thank you. <laughs> and send a follow-up email. Send a follow-up email. And you know what? I have contacts, I, I come from the medical device pharma world. And the reason I keep on saying hi is because I'm here. Please give examples from your area, because I, you know, we're all together here. This is a workshop. Uh, so please, if you have examples of how you've been successful in doing whatever we're talking about, let us know. But um, I have contacts in the medical device pharma world, and I'm on LinkedIn. So my personal profile is always talking about pharma, medical device. And I reach out, you know, when somebody gets a new job. So as far as they know, I haven't even left the industry. And I left it, what, four years ago? Because I stay in touch. And because you never know. And they're not in publishing. I mean, you know, one could think, well, what do they have to offer? What, you know, but you never know. So always make sure that you reward somebody, in particular somebody that gets back to you, with a quick hello. Yeah. I had somebody send me an email from, uh, I think it was Amber. And several years later, she said, hi, just sending a quick hello. I was having problems with my boyfriend or something, you know, and then we talked about it and, and you were really, so just, I mean, that touched me. The fact that, you know, she still remembered afterwards that we had a time and that we met and we talked. So always make sure that you reward contact by a follow-up. Um, in particular, if it's something that's related to them. So, um, you know, the Yellow Crowd is here. So I'm gonna put you out for Mountain Dale Press. <laughs> Outstanding publishing company. So when you see something that comes up and there's your write-up on her, 
And you, but she's never met you. Do you think, how appropriate would it be for you to send her, if you have a contact information, um, to send her an email and say, hey, congratulations, I saw that you're a writer. Do you think that would be appropriate? Sure. Anybody? Sure, sure right? Yeah. Why not? And how likely do you think it would be for Danielle, out of her busy day and everything that comes her way, for somebody that took the time just to, you know, say, hey, congratulations. Do you think she's going to notice your name or who you are, right? And what's the likelihood that she's going to say, thank you very much, what do you do, what do you do? I don't know. Right? <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you respond and say, oh, and thank you. Oh, you're a narrator, really? Oh, you just never know. Or maybe she just at that moment doesn't need whatever your services are, but you just never know. Right? So, you know, always take the time. Always. The with them is really important. What's in it for the other person? But, but I have to tell you something that's really, this is coming from somebody who's in marketing or was trained in marketing. And most of, and even from the law and attorneys, we get a bad rap for being writers and, you know, we tend to over expand things. But at the core, you have to be genuine. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always think, you know, marketing and the attorneys and all that, it doesn't matter. As an individual, as a person, just be genuine. Really mean it when you congratulate. Don't do it just because you think it's going to get you, because it comes through. Yeah, please. I was just going to say, we like to say friendships first, contact second. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's quotable. Mm -hmm. Friendships first, contact second. Because at the end of the day, all of us in this room right now, right, we're just people. So don't be afraid to approach the next person next to you because they're just like you. Everybody's struggling. Everybody's trying to get by. We're all trying to do our best. You know? Yes, sorry. I was just going to say one of my favorite books on this topic is called The Go-Giver. The Go-Giver? The Go-Giver. It's a really small little anecdotal. It's kind of told through a fictional, it's a, it's a uh, management book, a uh, business management book, but it's kind of told through a fictional storyline. But the whole point of it is to always be focused on giving more than you get and trying to give more to that other person, be their cheerleader, be their friend, as opposed to looking for what you can get for yourself. And I have found as I have implemented that strategy, that it makes everything less stressful too, because you're not worried about you, you, you. You're worried about how you can uplift other people. That's a great point. So did everybody hear the go-giver? I'm gonna get that book. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's, let's try to live our lives. Again, this is not pontificating. This is probably, you probably thought, oh, we came to talk about networking. Here she is <laughs> talking about, you know, giving. But ultimately, at the end of the day, networking is about building relationships. And how do you build relationships? Think about what's in it for the other person first. Think about giving. So the go-giver, I'm going to get that book. Yes? I mean, so on, on that subject, when you're trying to build relationships in the publishing industry, like if I'm, I'm, I'm approaching a publisher, really what I'm giving them is a great big burden of like seven or eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, but I'm sorry. You said what you're giving them is a great burden? Yeah, I mean, because they, they have to work all the way, they have to at least get through the first chapter, they have to go through the whole book. I mean, it's a whole lot of work for something that may may pay off big, but ultimately it's a very small chance. You right. should talk to more publishers. You'd be surprised. What they do is publish books. It's how they make a living, and they're excited to see them. Well, yeah, but they only publish like 1% of the books they see. But if they don't get them, <laughs> I like I like this. I like this. This is the workshop mode. Good. So what I, so what I heard what I heard was, you know, I don't want to give the publisher more work because they, they hardly ever publish books and then the counter was, well that's their purpose. Publishers publish books. So you're approaching them about their purpose. And I have somebody in the front who's been inching to say something. <laughs> <laughs> In response to the gentleman who said publishers are in it, right? So generally speaking, LMBPN has been an a, a IP creation engine. We are now getting into the publishing side of things, and he's absolutely right. Now, if you know our genre, if you came to me with a romance, we're going to go, sorry. It's not that, sorry, your book sucks. It's, sorry, we don't know how to sell this. And therefore, we're not going to do you or us any service if we try to publish something in an area we don't have expertise. But if you bring to us a sci-fi, an urban fantasy, a paranormal, you know, any of the areas because you've researched us and said, hey, here's something. We're going to say, here's how you get involved in our production of publishing 
to get find out, do we want it, do we not, do we have another idea? If you ask Mountain Dale Press, you're gonna find out they're in lit RPG. They're in the, you know, that arena of different types of books. If you give them a sci-fi, mm, chances are you're not gonna hit them. But if it's an RPG, I guarantee you they're gonna have interest in at least hearing about it, yes? So, so thank you for playing. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo! laughs> you get a pen from Caesars. <laughs> So, sorry, if I, may, if, I may, if I may add really quickly. So um, it concerns me. It concerns me that that's your view. Because what I'm hearing you say, with all due respect to you, is that you don't think that there's something in it for them. And as a publisher, there's always something in for the publisher, in particular if your book is that good, if you're talking about yourself or even about someone else. So if I'm Michael Anderley, and that's the only publisher that you see here, which I doubt, Mountain Dale's here, if you, if you see no one else, and you're a romance writer, and you know that he's sci-fi, and you know that most likely LMBPM doesn't publish it. If I'm you, you know what I'm gonna do? If he's the only one around, I'm gonna say, hey, Michael Anderley, hi, I'm Judith Anderley. I, I write romance novels, I have this really outstanding book because it's the best I've ever written. I know that you don't do sci-fi, but if you know of a romance publisher, I'd appreciate it if you could give him my name, drop your name, leave him alone. That is gonna impact. I can help. He can help, because guess what? The next person he's gonna to talk to is Enrique, who's looking actually for romance, or that's what they do. And then he's gonna say, and he's gonna say, hey, Enrique, oh, by the way, you know this guy approached me, I don't know if he's good or not, or a gal approached me, here, here's the name. And you just never know. For all I know, Enrique at that moment is looking for somebody new, and you just never know. So always take advantage, to Mike's point, don't expect that they, you know, if the publisher doesn't write your genre, but if that's the only person you have there and that's the only resource you have there and you're at 20 books and this is your time, you act on it now, you know. But you're giving him an opportunity to have a contact with somebody else because, you know, he's giving it to the next publisher. So that's the way I would see it. Yes. Oh, mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Just... No, it was a lady behind you, sorry. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to add a comment to um, what Michael was saying about being a sci-fi publisher, being approached by a romance writer. Yes. Uh-oh. And <laughs> says says the romance writer. What I like is like you're not too much for the right person. So if you're too much for, or if you feel like you're a burden on that publisher because they're not you, maybe it's just because they aren't the right person. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It just means your approach is wrong. Yes. And all you do is modify that approach or or change the approach with that person. Right? You're like, okay, just. You know, if you know a romance publisher, great, and then don't, right, don't push it because that's not really the right person for you, but still, it's, don't, don't think it's your problem necessarily um, for your burden. It's if, if how, you, you, how you approach Correct, and you. thank you. And actually, so. <laughs> You're on a keychain. Or behind door number two. <laughs> no. <laughs> So that's exactly the point. So, that, you know, it, all right, thank you. But the bottom line is this. You're not a burden. We're not a burden. We're all people. We're all in it trying to survive. We're all trying to make the best we can. As an author, you're putting out great stories. And you want to make sure those stories get to the people, the right people. And your conduit can be a publisher, an agent, or you self-publish through Amazon. But the bottom line is take advantage of your resources. Build up your network. Follow up with them. Make sure you understand what's in it for them, because ultimately, you want to make sure that your stories get to your readers. And and t- yes. Sorry, I have a question. Yes. As um, a new author, I come to twenty books. Gig, and you guys have created a culture of encouragement. Here. Correct. So I feel like I could go up to anyone and and just talk to them and, or compliment them or thank them or whatever. Mm-hmm. But with, in the rest of the industry, is that are people as accepting and open and like willing to help? I would, I would, I would love to tell you that yes, everybody's willing to help and everybody. Unfortunately, that's not reality. But, but here's the point. Here's the caveat. It doesn't matter, right? Because ultimately, the approach, the way you address it, and what you're looking for is to provide a resource to whomever. If it's a publisher, you're providing them with a new book. Yes, it's in it for you because you're the author and you're writing it, but you're thinking you know, about what genre they write or is it a resource that they could use. So if I were you, 
I mean, again, a pharma, you know, medical device is a different industry in this, and it's the same principles that apply there. So whatever I'm talking about is what I experienced myself. You know, what I've learned from and what's made me successful in those industries to this day is the fact that it doesn't matter about the industry. These principles are the same even at church, right? Uh, even, you know, with your family. The same principles apply. Yes? I think it's important to do your research. So if you don't want to be a word on the publisher, then you don't send a romance book to Michael Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> do your research. You know he does sci-fi. And you send them sci-fi, or you go find your romance publisher somewhere else. If you don't do your research, then you are wasting your time. Outstanding point. Research. And actually, that was one of my talking points. If I can stand up still, it's right, but I'm falling. Um, yes, research is really key. And that's the legwork. You know, when I talked about the fact that we go to the book and we get this, I mean, this thing weighs. I bring it with me, right? And, and you know, Michael hates carrying stuff. Yeah, but, she doesn't bring it with her. <laughs> stick to the script. I love, I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. That's right. <laughs> But it's, it's because I want to do my research. I want to find out. And I, you know, we can do it online digitally, right? But I do want to do my research and make sure that I do offer what's in it for the people that I'm talking to. And when I, when I said, you know, hey, Michael Ambry is sci-fi, he's not a romance, what I meant was, if he's the only resource mm -hmm. and, and he's there, do you want to give up that opportunity and say, well, I'll contact him? Like, no, at that moment, you take advantage well, of it. Just to clarify what I... Uh, meant was you don't send them an email or something, but if you're right in front of them, you say hello, tell them who you are, tell them what you do, even if it's just for, you know, polite conversation. Yes, no, so thank you, you're right. So the research is when you're back home or, you know, you're getting ready for a meeting or something, right? If you know that you're going to meet individuals, you want to do a research on them so you can offer them what's in it for them. Yes. So besides looking at things as the answer being not necessarily no, but maybe not no, not right now. Is there any other advice you have for people who really have a hard time with rejection um, to give them some more confidence of how to go about things? Uh, you know, because I've heard no a lot, and so I'm just persistent. But I know not everybody is like, oh, I feel like you punched me in the gut, and I'm still going to continue on. Yeah. So... Besides saying, you know, grow a thicker skin, right? Because <laughs> it's easy, right? I, what, have you guys seen that commercial, you know, on, 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 on Fortune said drug, on depression, and, you know, the family tells them, get over it, smile, you know, think of it as a sunny day, and it's like, that's not very helpful. So it wouldn't be very helpful for me to tell you, well, grow a thicker skin. What I can tell you is this, you know, if you bring it back to the fact that if you're concerned about making that call or you're concerned about making that email, and or if somebody's a jerk to you and they don't put it in the bigger scope of things at the end of the day that one rejection or that one person being a jerk to you yes it hurts you at that moment but when you look at the scheme of things when you think of the stuff that people are going through somewhere else you know i'm sorry i have to tell you it's not really that big of a deal try to put it in content you know, in that moment, you feel like it's your world and they're being mean to you. But if you can, step outside of it and think. You know, I was watching a documentary on a, a girl from Brazil in the favelas who can barely eat. Do you think they're worried about somebody being mean to them? You know, so they try to put it in content, try to put it in a bigger, try to step yourself out of that rejection at that moment and just go, you know what? Maybe that person has a person dying at home. I don't know. You never know why people are the way they are. So that works really well. Or you could take the lame and keep their name and put them and kill them in a book. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> also, uh, going along with that, um, if you do find that you're very sensitive to rejection, Google rejection sensitivity disorder because it is a real thing. Oh, thank you. Uh, see, something new. Rejection sensitivity disorder is a real thing. Google it, and, and there's resources to try to overcome it, other than, you know, putting it in a bigger content. I bet you anything, there's one of those points must be that. But thank you for that reason. Yes. I saw him. Yes. Gina. Well, I, you know, in, in every industry, this is the case. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, coming from the art side, we go through exactly the same thing. I had doors slip, shut in my face. I had one woman throw my portfolio out and say, why did you drop this off? 
They can be rude, but if you do this long enough, you're gonna realize this is just simply part of the game. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna play it all, this is gonna be about 70% of it. But you'll, you only need the five to 1% to work for you. So if you're gonna call 100 people, you expect two. And it's gonna work. The math just works out. So that's, and that's a good point, right? So bottom line is, if you're gonna play the game, and by the way, you're gonna play the game because you're breathing. Right? Yeah. The game the, the game basically is us living every day. So every day we're going to wake up and every day we risk rejection, even from our own family, right? And so at the end of the day, just know that for the most part, if you get rejection, there's going to be a percentage that's going to come your way. And it's that percentage that makes it worthwhile, right? Yes. I was just going to add on to that where you have to give people the opportunity to help you too. So they won't know if you don't say anything. Um, so like you, what you guys are saying, calling, I mean, you know, only like get maybe like a three percent return, but you know, back, back to the old adage, you know, you don't get any of the shots you don't take, so, you know, maybe they do reject you, but I mean, I know authors who take all of the rejection letters and they put them up on the wall, and it's basically a show of bravery of like, here's all of the times I stepped out of my comfort zone and took a leap of faith and tried to reach out, and like, it's not bad to be rejected, it hurts, yes. but... You didn't have anything otherwise. Yes, I completely agree. I think you got to take a shot, right? Otherwise, you won't have a shot. Well, yes. To add to that, one of the strategies that I've heard on some podcast somewhere is if you're worried about rejection, turn to gamify it. So maybe your goal is to not to get one yes, but you're going to ask until you get 20 no's or 50 no's or 100 no's. Oh, I see. And once you get, once you get to that benchmark, then you're allowed to be upset. You're like, yes, I'm at 100. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 no's. Oh, I, I get it. I, at first, I didn't understand what you were saying. So basically, so, turn it into a game, and the more no's you get, the better. It's like, exactly. hey, exactly. I'm at 1,000. <laughs> okay, that's okay, the You game it by calling them up and go, look, fuck you first. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and now you understand what I go through. <laughs> yes. Uh, for those of us who are at Wallflowers, uh, particularly coming Which is to, all of us, by the way. Right, uh -huh. right. I mean, 1,300 introverts go mingle, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so, you, know, you go to uh, a conference like this, and I, I know it can be overwhelming with the number of people. This isn't my first one, one of these. I think, what was it, Smarter Artists in 2017? Yes. There's like 150 people, and even that seemed a bit big for me. But what I found is that uh, instead of trying to engage with everybody that you see, maybe find a small core group. Because even in that core group, those people are going to know other people, and other people, and other people. Yeah, can you pull your mask down a little bit? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, now, we did, uh, what was it, karaoke. Broke up into small rooms, and I don't know if you remember that, but I was sitting next to these guys in that, in that uh, uh, group, and everybody knew more and more people mm -hmm. and so you just find that small group and then uh, grow it from there that's that's a good point so basically in growing your network thank you um you also get one uh, in growing your network if you feel overwhelmed because you don't want to grow it out of this big group try to find a smaller group so try to take oh, sorry I'm, I'm not wearing my mask <laughs> uh thank you try to try to grow your 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 network by spawning starting small if that's what you're comfortable with uh, but again, you know, this is a great, I mean, how many, I, I know we're running out of time, that was the alarm for five minutes, but I want to just quickly recap what we talked about, because ultimately, you know, this, uh, this whole session, the workshop that we just went through really is about networking in the publishing industry, right, and how to develop. So the first thing is to make sure that you remember that take your resources, you have resources here, make sure you develop a list, right, of contacts, follow up with those contacts. But when you're reaching out to those contacts, do your research, right? Make sure that you have something to offer them, or even if you think that you, you know, you're not sure, just be polite about it, address them, you know, tell them what they, remind them of what their purpose is and why you're contacting them. And then um, if somebody's, hopefully they won't be jerks, but even if you hear a no, make sure you follow up. And even when you hear a yes, follow up again. And keep that name as a contact because you never know when that person will be a resource to you. And ultimately, I think that just as, if nothing else, if you remember nothing else, we're all people. 
we're all, you know, in the same boat. Don't feel like you can't approach somebody because they're so and so because it doesn't matter. We're all here to help each other, okay? So hopefully this has been useful. If not, we're available, so feel free to